We've had a number of questions about one of the unique features on the Dark Arrow 1, which is the split rudder. Now we've talked about the split rudder before at AirVenture and in public talks and on our social media, but we thought it'd be good to make a dedicated video to cover the design in more detail. So let's talk about the split rudder. What is it? How does it work? And why do we choose to implement it? Okay, so to start off, let's make sure we're all on the same page in terms of the fundamentals of aircraft flight controls. So I have the Dark Arrow 1 wind tunnel model here to demonstrate some of the basic concepts. So when you're flying through the air in an airplane, it's desirable to be able to control a thing. And aircraft can maneuver in pitch, roll, and yaw. And the vertical stabilizer found at the aft end of the fuselage provides both stability and control in the yaw axis. Your rudder is a movable control surface found at the trailing edge of the vertical stabilizer and it deflects left and right to give you yaw control. A normal rudder is just a single control surface that deflects left and right, pointing the aircraft left and right. Now the split rudder on the Dark Arrow 1 is actually two rudders and they can each deflect outward individually, but they can also deflect outward together and give a speed brake function. Okay, so how does this whole split rudder speed brake thing work? Well, each rudder is cable actuated by pushing on the rudder pedals. A bell crank mechanism in the root of the vertical stabilizer converts the pull motion of the cable into an outward deflection motion of the rudder. And there's a spring mechanism to return the rudder to neutral position. Each rudder only deflects outward and they do not travel past center. Basically, your left pedal gives you left rudder deflection, your right pedal gives you right rudder deflection, and both rudder pedals together will give you speed brake function. And then you can do any combination of the rudder pedals to give you both a yaw control and speed brake function. Having a speed brake on a low drag airframe like the Dark Arrow 1 is useful because it allows you to slow the airplane and it also allows you to descend without picking up excessive airspeed. Now at this point, the whole speed brake, split rudder thing might seem a bit odd. And as far as we know, there aren't any other kit aircraft out there doing it exactly like we've done. But there are other aircraft that have implemented a split rudder. Most notable, of course, would be both the US and Soviet space shuttles, and a little bit lesser known would be the original Beach Stagger Wing. Similar concepts to our split rudder can be found on the split ailerons on the B2, as well as the split ailerons on the A10. And also of notable mention would be the speed brake on the British Aerospace 146 and the Honda Jet. And the actuation and function of our rudder pedals is nearly identical to the rudder operation procedure found in rutan style canard aircraft such as the very easy and long easy why did we choose to implement a split rudder rather than just a conventional rudder and a dedicated speed brake well to answer that let's head back to the whiteboard and we can talk through some of the design decision making process okay i have my two different configurations laid out on the marker board here uh, conventional rudder and dedicated speed brake on the left and the split rudder and integrated speed brake on the right and then the different factors that we were weighing out between the two when we were deciding which one to go with. It looks like a lot, but I'll walk through it all and explain everything. Uh, just high level quick, different factors are operation first, basically do they work, what things need to be taken into account there. The weight comparison between the two systems, manufacturing considerations, how does the cost compare, as well as the build time comparison, and the cool factor. That one's just kind of for fun, but I'll talk about it at the end. Okay, so starting off with the traditional conventional rudder, dedicated speed brake, that's well proven. Obviously a conventional rudder works and a dedicated speed brake works, so I don't need to talk about that a whole lot. But the thing to remember is that it's two systems, uh, one system for the rudder, one system for the speed brake. And for this system, I'll use as an example, a speed brake that's advertised on the market which is similar to what's found in Cirrus SR style aircraft or Lance Air and Glass Air. That unit is advertised as doubling your airframe drag when it's deployed. So how does the proposal of the split rudder and integrated speed brake compare? Well, right off the bat, we've combined the two systems into one. So advantage right away of one system rather than two. And then in terms of how much drag we can generate with the speed brake, uh, we also believe that we can double the airframe drag when it's deployed. We've run some numbers, done some simulation. We should be able to get at least that, 
Probably can get a little bit more even, but we need to prove that out in flight testing. One disadvantage right away in operation though with this is a split style control surface does have more drag than a traditional style conventional console control surface. Uh, however, the Dark Arrow one was optimized around a design point of high speed long range cruise. So in a cruise configuration, you don't have a whole lot of deflection on your rudder. So there isn't much disadvantage uh, at our optimized design point. If you're in a climb or maneuvering, this is going to have a little bit more drag, but we're not optimized around that point. So not too much of a concern there. One thing we did do to offset this issue though, is you'll notice that the vertical stabilizer on the Dark Arrow one is very tall, skinny. So it has a large or a high aspect ratio, which makes the vertical stabilizer efficient at generating lift laterally. So that minimizes the amount of deflection that we need to use in order to achieve the desired maneuver. Okay, well, how does the weight compare though between these two systems? I'm sure we're thinking, okay, two rudders has to be heavier than a single rudder. Well, we came up with a design for a single conventional rudder on the Dark Arrow one, and that design looked about 2.2 pounds. Um, if you watch my video on weight repeatability, you'll remember that the weight of the two rudders that we came up with on the split rudder configuration also summed up to be about 2.2 pounds. Why are they the same weight? Well, with a standard single rudder, you need to install a counterbalance weight to uh, prevent the control surface from fluttering. We're using a different strategy on the split rudder to prevent flutter, which is we have hard stops, which prevents the rudders from traveling over center. And also they have a spring return to center. So it's a different strategy, but we believe that we can make this work. So weight wise, it's a bit of a wash, whether you have one rudder or two. But when you start to take into account the entire aircraft systems with uh, speed brake and rudder, uh, this system has an advantage. So going back to my example of the off the shelf, commercially available speed brake, that unit is advertised as nine pounds. The way I'm accounting for the weight of our speed brake system on the Dark Arrow One is just measuring the weight of the actuator mechanism required to deflect two rudders rather than one. That piece of hardware weighs about a half a pound. So when you sum up the system weights, this configuration is about eight to eight and a half pounds ahead. So that's good. Okay, what about manufacturing? Certainly there has to be a disadvantage for two rudders versus one. Well, when we looked into this, we would actually need to make a dedicated mold to have a dedicated rudder. Interestingly, with this configuration, we can mold the rudder and the vertical stabilizer skin in one mold. So all the way from the leading edge to the trailing edge is molded in one piece, and then we cut the rudder apart from the vertical stabilizer skin after it's removed from, from the mold. So this one actually has a bit of a manufacturing advantage for us. Might seem a little counterintuitive, but that's the way it worked out. What about cost though? Again, going back to my example of the off-the-shelf commercially available speed brake, this unit's advertised for over $5,000. Uh, the way we account for cost on the split rudder is the cost of the hardware required for two rudder, rudders rather than one. That hardware adds up to about $200. So there's a significant cost savings with this configuration. Now, you might be thinking at this point, okay, this is not fair. This is a really expensive speed brake. It's also maybe kind of heavy. Couldn't you guys do better in terms of cost and weight? Well, we thought the same thing and we came up with something and it ended up looking like this. What about the build time though for a uh, Dark Arrow One builder? Uh, this unit is advertised at 35 to 45 hours installation time. I'm assuming that's the time required to install the hardware run all the electrical lines, install switches, actuators, troubleshoot it, uh, advertise 35 to 45 hours. The way I'm accounting for the net delta in build time with this configuration, we have an extra rudder instead of just one rudder. That's about 10 extra hours to install the hardware hinges, that kind of stuff. And then the speed brake is uh, about three hours to assemble the brackets and hardware associated with deflecting two rudders rather than, than one. So if you sum up the net time for the two systems, we're ahead with this configuration. Now, maybe I'm wrong on some of these numbers. Uh, even if we're off by a factor of two, uh, say a new builder is inexperienced, 
uh, is having trouble with this, you're still ahead compared to that. Okay, lastly, the cool factor. Now, this is not something that we typically take into account when we're designing something. Uh, this was just a little bit after the fact because uh, after showing off the split rudder for the first time at AirVenture 2018, uh, we noticed a lot of people really liked it and thought it was cool. It wasn't really something that we accounted for at the beginning though. Um, so maybe a little bit biased here saying that this is cooler than this. No offense to anyone with a normal rudder. They obviously are great and work fine. Uh, not meaning to hurt anyone's feelings there, but yeah, hard to deny that the split rudder is kind of cool. Uh, there's a couple other factors that we didn't take into account here uh, and disadvantages for the split rudder configuration. Biggest one I'm seeing is that uh, it's just not normal. So that generates a couple issues. One is that uh, the operation of this is a little bit different than tradition. Uh, however, it's definitely proven the operation of the split rudder configuration is very similar to what's found in Rutan style canard aircraft, such as the Very Easy and Long Easy. And there are literally thousands of these aircraft flying. So it's already proven that pilots can adapt to operating this type of system. You don't have to be a Top Gun style fighter pilot in order to operate this system. The other big disadvantage is that with it being new, it's unproven and that's up to us to figure out, is this gonna work or not, or can we make it work? Uh, and that excites me. I think doing something a little bit different is going in the spirit of the history of aviation as well as experimental aviation. So I think with that, I can end this discussion here. Okay, so now you know all there is to know about the Dark Arrow 1 split rudder. Hopefully everything was clear. If not, definitely leave a question in the comments below and we'll be happy to answer you. Thanks for watching guys. See you next time.